Hello there boys and girls, welcome back to MyLittleTunnel.com Today I've got something uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Photoshop and uh, to be more specific with the high pass filter. Um, if you don't know what that is and you're expecting this tutorial to show you some cool visual effects then you can just stop right now because this is not what this one is about. Uh, those of you who do know what a high pass filter is you probably missed this filter from After Effects because it doesn't come with any high pass filter which is uh, a bit strange for me as far as image processing is concerned because that's like a basic thing right uh, but today uh, I'm going to show you in this quick tutorial how to make your own high pass filter in uh, After Effects and I'm going to show you two ways to do that so the first uh, way is to simply duplicate the layer that, that you're interested in like so apply the invert filter like so then uh, just simply go to the opacity so press T and set the opacity to 50% uh, once you put the positive and negative together you get a neutral right that's uh, obvious so uh, what do we do next to achieve the high pass filter effect is that we change the blending mode to linear light and then simply we have to introduce somehow the radius of the high pass filter and to do that we're going to use fast blur or you can use Gaussian blur if you want you know high quality results but it's not that much of a difference uh, click on repeat edge pixels and then simply drag the slider and as you can see we have built a high pass filter really quickly but uh, you're probably wondering what's the second technique. Well, if you know me, then you know I don't like to have uh, too many layers. I don't like keyframes and stuff like that. So I figured out a way to do the high pass filter as a preset that you can, you know, just drag on your target layer. And that's it. So we're going to build that right now. And you will also be able to download it with the project file. So let's just get rid of this. And remember, we set the opacity to 50%, we set the invert filter and the fast blur. Uh, also, we can tint it, uh, you know, uh, gray, both layers, I mean, so create the adjustment layer and tint it like so, because high pass filter is usually used on grayscale images. And uh, one more thing, it's better to use the tint effect rather than uh, drop the saturation down to zero, because the, the results are a bit different and the uh, tint works a little bit better. Uh, okay, so as you can see, to achieve this effect we have to have three layers, you know, and just uh, play with the blur amount with the blur slider, and that's not really what I like. So let's create uh, a preset, a high pass filter preset that we can just drop in to a single layer. First of all, we apply the first filter, which is invert like so. Then we have to somehow change the opacity of the invert to 50%. Uh, you may think that we can use this slider to do it but it won't work for many reasons. So simply and we of course cannot drop the opacity of this layer to 50% because then we would get transparent pixels right and that's also not what we want. So what do we do to have this opacity set to 100 and still have the 50% opacity on on the pixels. Well, we simply apply transform effect like so, drop it down to 50%. We of course get the transparent pixels, but this opacity is still set to 100 and this will be crucial in the next few steps. So, uh, right now we need to apply the blur effect to have the radius of the high pass filter. So let's just drag it in like so. As you can see, it works. And the last step, the last basic step, because we're going to do some advanced things uh, a bit later, is CC Composite, which we drag in, we turn off RGB only, so we also copy the alpha channel, and we set it to behind. Voila! Ain't that just perfect? But, uh, the results are slightly different. 
since we've turned the opacity down in here we need to do some tweaking on the levels of this uh, high pass filter because um, let you know instead of explaining I'll just show you uh, let me just drag this again in here and do a quick high pass filter again the traditional way um, so invert and blur like so, repeat edge pixels, opacity to 50 and linear light. And let's set the blur amount to 10 for example. And right now let's grab a screenshot of this, snapshot I mean, so shift F5 and let's do the same thing with this one. We used how much? 10 I think. So now take a closer look how different the results are. Just move to full res in here, uh, or not. When I press F5, it reveals the original um, high pass filter that we did, you know, the traditional way. So as you can see, it's it's half as strong. So how do you make this one, based on one layer, half uh, much stronger? Well, we simply apply the levels effect and we have a range in here right from 0 to 255 and this is divided by the gamma to two parts from which each one is 127 I guess so basically what we have to do is we have to divide this by 2 and this gives us 63.5 and now we have to subtract 63.5 from the input white and this should be exactly the same as the original let me just check so f5 yep this is exactly the same and the only thing we have to do now uh, to make this preset even better we can drag in a checkbox and call it monochrome and a slider and let's call this one radius and now we just have to pull in the tint in here and we have to write two simple expressions since the checkbox returns the values of true and false which are represented by 1 and 0 we can simply type in for the amount of tint which should be 0 or 100 percent we can simp simply take the checkbox value which in this case is 0 and multiply it by 100 and now when it's 0 which is false we've got 0 and when it's 1 which is true then it's 100 pretty cool slight difference in the image I hope you can see it uh, you know because this is compressed video so you know not everything is as clear as it should be um, okay and the next thing is to uh, have the radius and the blurriness so simply use a pick whip like this and that's really it let's see if it works okay works perfectly so the only thing left to do is just to select all of the effects, drag it into your effects and preset palette and type in high pass yes, overwrite because I already have this one okay so once you've got the preset saved um, I think I will show you a few ways to use it anyway I know I said I wouldn't but uh, you know just for those of you guys who are interested in this I just think you should know this anyway right um, so uh, first of all if you're familiar with the blending modes and I guess you are um, you probably thought looking at this light gray color which is exactly 127 what would happen if you would overlay this image over the original image so this is exactly what we're going to do and the results are simply stunning let me just uh, turn this down to 5 maybe 
and zoom in so we can see it closely. Uh, let me just turn it off for a second and change the blending mode to overlay, which makes the gray disappear and the darkens darken and the light is lighter. Um, and let's just turn it on. See what happened? I hope you can see it because this is you know a screen recording and sometimes those little details don't show up. But in fact, what we get after overlaying the high pass filter over the original image is a very sophisticated high quality sharpening tool which is pretty much amazing some say it's better than the original sharpen and unsharp mask some say it's worse and I say it really depends on uh, you know on the thing that you're doing right now so at this point uh, if we turn it up to 30 I don't think the results look uh, uh, very well because uh, it actually actually lo looks a bit worse I guess but then again if you pump it up to like 100 or 200 it starts to look better again of course this is too strong but we can of course play with the opacity right now or you know do some other things take a look at this this is before this is after maybe this is the look that you're looking for something kinda like a bleach bypass or whatever um, so this is one way of using it and the other way just take a look at it let me just turn this down to 5 again and switch to normal uh, and of course to 100% opacity this is also very clever um, edge detection at you know from a certain point of view of course but you can see that all the non-detailed areas of the image virtually disappear. Uh, they're not so contrasty anymore and we do have uh, all the details, even single hair like in here or in here. So in video processing this is, uh, I think this is a pretty uh, good starting point to do some edge detection and in uh, Photoshop like you know a single image when you're playing with a single image I think this is also a good point to a very complex masking techniques like for the hair or you know something like that and uh, also I guess this is uh, one tip that you will enjoy the most if you are a happy owner of Andrew Kramer's evolution which you can get at videocopilot.net uh, then you probably remember uh, all the cool coloring techniques that uh, Andrew showed in his original tutorial and this high pass filter is actually a good way to do the coloring on the evolution elements or any similar elements uh, you know 2d one color elements so let's just drag something in let's drag uh, flourish number 10 which is my personal favorite Okay, let's create a new comp, uh, 600 by 400 maybe, I'm just guessing, um, make a background and drop it in, scale it down, yeah, it fits pretty nicely, okay, scale it down even more, and yeah, let's put some text, some cool text. And what we're going to do on the text, we're going to apply our text ramp, which in fact you can use on any type of layer. Uh, just that the text ramp was uh, the thing that I built it for. Text ramp, okay. And let's go with the default goldy color and let's apply the high pass filter. High pass filter on the flourish itself see how all uh, the thick areas are grayed out and we can of course control that using the radius you know how much gray how much white and so on and so forth and now what we can do we can in fact uh, put the colorama in and we can use the same one that we have on our text layer so let's just select it copy it and paste it in here 
and take a look at this. Of course we need to play with the output cycle or the phase shift to make it look the way we want, but you get the point. It's no longer a ramp or single color. We can get different colors and different areas of this flourishes and we can do it uh, you know, uh, with a single click almost. Let's take a look at this. Ah, you know what, let me just uh, create a cool background. Why not? If we're doing a nice render we should do a nice background as well. Uh, so let me just drag so let me just drag a circle and change the blending mode to uh, normal I guess and set the color to like a dark red like so and also feather it out and we get a nice instant vignetting almost instant vignetting so let's render this out and see how it looks uh, okay maybe this doesn't look as as nice as, as I thought it would but uh, <laughs> you get the point uh, it's probably the matter of you know tweaking up the parameters of colorama adding a uh, shadow maybe turning those layers into 3d adding a light and you know stuff like that uh, now we know the technique the rest is up to you so uh, once again, this is Maltanon. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short tutorial, and I guess I guess that's it. Uh, you're welcome to leave a comment on my website. I'm always looking forward to your comments and to replying to your emails. Now just go on, try it out, try it out on yourself, and I'll just stay here playing with my Colorama presets. Maybe I'll make my own presets someday. Ah, that would be cool. Yeah, and take a look at this. You can even animate the face shift to make this corny crappy look like this but like I said it's all up to you guys hope you've enjoyed it see you next time cheers